Welcome to Audio Gyan with Kedar Nimkar, a podcast that documents insightful conversations with Indian designers, artists, musicians, writers, thinkers, and creatives of all types. Catch us on iTunes or visit audiogyan.com for more Gyan sessions. Here's your host, Kedar Nimkar. This Audio Gyan session is happening at the backdrop of Women in Design 2020 Plus. an international conference and exhibition curated by the HECAR foundation which aims to share stories of women around the world in the field of architecture construction and other related design fields today i have eli gianani with us on audio gan eli is an architect and a director of an award winning melbourne based firm mgs architects Over the past 25 years, Eli has been responsible for design direction at MGS and winning numerous industry awards for her practice. We'll try and get insights into how she brings tenacity and passion for the craft of design with special interest in developing architectural topologies into project specific responses. She's based out of Australia. So thank you Eli for giving your time and it's a real real honor to have you on audio again. Oh, um, thank you for inviting me. Yeah. Uh, I'm very pleased to be here. Yeah. So uh yeah I've I've kept the name of uh, our talk as public architecture so I wanted to just understand because like you've done a lot of like huge body of work which can be encapsulated in like next 20 30 minutes but just trying to understand uh one aspect of your work uh, which is which has been seen over time that you have designed spaces which uh, uh which are inclusive in nature so i wanted to just understand some of the thoughts thank you. around that yeah thank thank you for that question yeah. yes our work is very broad we mm. um we in fact pride ourselves in not specializing too narrowly um uh, but we are very uh interested and very uh, passionate about the public uh the public space mm-hmm. and um and really when we think about the anthropocene age and the fact that uh, more more and more people are moving into the cities and cities are becoming large uh i mean uh melbourne where i come from is not the size of mumbai but certainly it it's growing at a rapid rate and therefore the question is how do we live how can we live well in a place that is much more congested than it was when when we were children you know a, a generation or two or three ago i mean once upon a time when cities were first planned in australia and i'm sure in a lot of other places especially new city in the new world they were planned with certain ideas of open space um landmarks um Uh, housing and and zoning for different uh, different uses and as the cities as those cities have have um grown more organically i, I guess since they were but planned uh i think we've lost the art of thinking ahead we've we've used up the the public sta- spaces that are Uh, that our you know city fathers planned and we've used them for for commercial use mm. uh and we have not always planned so well new public spaces so for example um the ground uh plane in a, in a Mel- in a city like melbourne has been mostly used for commercial purposes there's very little um uh space in the city Uh, for free space you know where people can congregate but one thing that we have done very well in melbourne is the creation of these lanes so melbourne is known for its lanes and um the the city planners have um have kind of um uh in, encouraged and improved this uh network of lanes for pedestrians you know they're mainly a, a pedestrian route that cuts across all the big traffic um intersection or tra- traffic um uh, streams that occupy the the mm-hmm. main uh, the main roads really mm-hmm. so that's very pleasant that's nice very something I'm, re- I'm very proud of mm-hmm. yeah yeah so what according to you 
would be like the core requirement when it is going to be for public use i mean uh, if it's an public facing architecture which is your i wouldn't say malls but yeah certain like libraries museums what what is what do you think would be the core um uh, element which an architect or a city planner has to think about well it's it's not so much architecturally what we have to think about it's that public space needs to be truly democratic and truly free you know free for people to enjoy then uh if a if a space is owned by a corporation or a shopping center or a um you know it's it's not free mm. um people have to buy something in order f- for them to be allowed to be there mm. therefore i think the the primary element is is this element of you know the space needs to be free available mm. to to public to do whatever they need to do whether it's um protesting or whether it's meeting a friend or whether it's taking the children to play It, you know all sorts of activities should be allowed in 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 um in the city correct uh, sorry sorry to interrupt but uh, being democratic and uh free is sort of an output i wanted to understand what sort of input does it require i mean okay. i i did one interview with bv doshi sometime yes. back actually yes. i think episode yes yes um very said like you have to design staircases in such a way that the person on top may not feel superior uh, so you design it that gracefully right okay. so is there what's the input to design like a free space well for us uh in a in our society and and given that the cities are becoming more crowded uh uh the way we design um public spaces is to look at safety public safety. So spaces need to be designed so that there's no sp- no spaces where people where you could hide and mm. you know the there could be danger or where people feel um you know there's certain facilities like for example washrooms and and other things this shade for people to sit under uh, a shaded because Australia is is like a lot of it's like mumbai melbourne can be very hot like yeah. mumbai yeah. and and you need to sh- sit under shade you need to have trees um uh, so that you have a bit of climate mm. you know comfort uh, yeah. in the space and yes i think it's very important to have things like for example staircases or amphitheaters or other pa- other kind of uh, play areas or yes, performing yes infrastructure areas. in the public space but the main um concern is is that people should feel comfortable they should feel safe and and it should be for everyone mm-hmm. so yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah and then how do you say identify or define uh like a body and a soul of a place because Uh, mm. I and mean, that's that's my favorite mm. question to ask a lot mm. of architects as well because uh, uh if it's free uh, i understand if it's a commissioned work or if it's for say like a presidential suit which you're building or whatever there's a person one person entity so you can design you can understand you can uh take a walk through the history of that person and build stuff around it but when it's public emotions change cultures change and how people what kind of uh, economic changes the com- country is going through so all those things have to be taken care mm. right so how would you uh, probably define that okay so that's a very difficult question <laughs> e- especially so because uh well in melbourne and in australia we are relatively lo- we were co- colonized by the british uh and the nation is uh, you know we had a very very rich indigenous uh culture which was not recognized at all when when european man came to to australia so in a way we have lost a lot mm. you know we have lost a lot of um context and a lot of um and a and a and a culture which could have enriched our own uh in in major ways and now we're trying to recover that but it of course it's very you know it's a lot of it is too late after mm. the fact mm. but um one thing that i would say is that public space i mean as a nation we need to find our own expression um 
we live in a globalized economy and a globalized uh, context, but nevertheless, there are some very important uh, questions about context and about culture, which are very specific to a place like Melbourne, for example. In Melbourne, the football is a very important thing. So people, I had a very um, influential um, uh, teacher at un- university, and his name is uh, Peter Corrigan. Unfortunately, he died last year. And he um, he established a Melbourne school in the sense a Melbourne aesthetic, which was not about... Uh, and it was not about purely about aesthetics, of course, but it was about culture, mm. about thinking uh, of what made us uh, an Australian, uh, truly Australian in some ways. Mm. And, of course, some of this is very, um, in a relatively young country like Australia, it's, it's a very contentious issue. I mean, of course, we have a culture which is probably the oldest culture in the world with the Aboriginal um, dream time stories and all of that, but they were not urbanised. So when, once uh, we established l- large cities, we've had to invent how to be in that city. Of mm. course, a lot of the structure and a lot of the way that we designed Early, the early design of cities like Melbourne was on a grid, like the the kind of conventional mm. um, city planning that you see everywhere in mm. in the modern world since the Romans. You know, and cities have been subdivided into grids, and then something happens. You know, it's it's purely about uh, speculation. It's mainly, to, yeah, it's mainly to scale and faster yes. and just growth. Yes. Uh, yeah, yes. Yeah. Um, so, like you mentioned the word context, and I wanted to mm. just slightly uh, mm. dwell on that word itself. Mm. So, what what role does context play in every project? I mean, you it, can take up uh, you can take up any particular. Uh, I mean, there are these five elements: obviously, water, rain, earth. But mm. in in uh, in other more abstract sense, what does and why is it important? Also, mm. context. So, you mentioned in your introduction that I am particularly interested in typologies. So, wh- so context for me is, is everything almost. So, what we do in the office, which we do as a sort of a specific exercise when we start a project, is that we, um, of course, we have, we bring to the, we have an inception meeting. So, a design inception meeting. And to that, to that, um, at that point in time, the whole team comes together um, and brings different parts of uh, parts of the research that they need to bring to. So they, you know, obviously we have things that are practical like uh, topography, surveys, um, but we also, depending on the project, like for example, if it's a school, we bring to that meeting examples of schools in time you know it, there are certain types of buildings that were um, that were built in Melbourne which have certain characteristics mm. the schools was you know had some of these characteristics so we bring some examples of that to the table then we bring when then we do also some research overseas and we just look at other examples of schools from different parts of the world um, we we have re- we research the particular locality so different parts of different suburbs and different parts of the city have their own character street character and uh, uh, landscape character, all those sorts of things, and so we bring all this information in, in, and we start pinning it up on the walls, and then we start discussing what are the you know we do this kind of visual but also um, oral um, uh, kind of um, exploration, exactly yeah. exploration of ideas, so. Some people might say, look, the word uh, chasm comes to mind because we need to create 
uh, a cool space between, you know, because it's very hot here or because, it, you know, whatever. So we just pin these words to the images and then we, we talk around the group. It's a very collaborative process and we talk about, uh, you know, each other's ideas and why it is that something reminds us of this or the site has this particular had these particular buildings which may may have been demolished or maybe the the buildings are still there or what's next door you know because for us it's really important that once we've built our building uh, once we've designed our building and it's been it's it's been completed it it doesn't make the neighbor look bad you know it, mm. it needs to it, it <laughs> It, it needs to yeah, be. It name. needs to be a good neighbor. You know, it needs to make everything else look as look as good as it can be. Mm. Um, so yeah, so we discuss all these sorts mm. of concerns. Okay. And so does that culminate into sort of a tag cloud of keywords, and then each word has an association with, and then you build on top. That's of That's right. It. That's yeah. right. It yeah. is a. It is very much a, an iterative process where we build you know, these associations of images and words. Then we try and find other images that will, you know, we do a collage. Mm -hmm. So so all of these images, we might have, you know, a collage that that th where part of the board is 10, 20 images because it has to do with a particular thing, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and, and then another part of the board will have to do with something else. And then we decide, you know, is this a good direction? Mm -hmm. to go and then we start designing someone has to put pen to paper mm -hmm. <laughs> which is always the hard thing yeah, yeah. but you know there, we have people that are very talented and no but in this entire thing it seems like uh, it's more scientific in the approach right so where does that flare or dash of like abstraction or creativity just how does that play into the work then i mean okay you got what i'm saying right it's it's yeah. it's uh it's well you have to start with something mm. i mean i i don't believe that you can create in a vacuum you know mm. that doesn't really i mean people say that but it doesn't happen that's just fantasy <laughs> so so we all come from somewhere i mean i i'm originally from italy from rome so um Italians, as you know, were very strong in you know what it is that it, their their cultural roots. Mm. What are they? You know, they're very. In fact, almost too. You know, it almost stops them from in, inventing new things because their their cultural roots are so important mm. to them. So, when you say um, where does the creativity or where does the abstraction come from? Well, these are all things that. Um, you while you're thinking of all the um, you know during the workshop, the that's that's the some of that creative thinking is it it's starts to yeah. starts to appear, and then and sometimes as you say maybe that you know we're not on the right track and someone says but this doesn't feel right what about that you know mm. and then we you know we Can't we be. we talk about that and of course then there's also a, a i wouldn't say an office style but there's particular things that we're very fond of mm. so if you look at my buildings and and the 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 office the buildings that are produced by the office they're always very colorful they always um they try and and use materials intelligently so that the, that we don't, um, you know, we try and be spare with with materials for a sustain for, for sustainability reasons, which are scientific, but mm. also for uh, an aesthetic pleasure mm. of doing more with less. You know, yeah. it's that it's that sort of sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, speaking about buildings, I have actually last two questions. So, with your project, especially the Mac Entry Drive, uh, McIntyre Drive, yeah, McIntyre yes. Drive uh, Apartments, uh, which you did in 2012, uh, yes. which has also won many awards. Yes. Uh, so, it's mainly designed to give people a sense of village. I mean, mm. that's what that mm. was written in the article. Yes. So, if you can tell us briefly that how did you manage to weave inclusiveness for this particular project and uh, since especially these people are living um, in the air right so they are they, they are so what was the thought process behind that and then how did uh, like as you mentioned these 
keywords so mm. if you can illustrate with that mm. and then how did it come about okay so that project is actually a ha- uh, social housing project mm. and um it's in a part of melbourne that's very low scale so most of the um most of the uh, uh residential mean, uh, in terms of topography Re- or in terms uh, of the low economic? scale in terms of no 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 low scale in terms of um uh built environment so the okay. one story villas mostly around with suburban villas in mm. in in that locality so that al- that always is uh, you know when when you're trying to make some a place and this this was a particular um uh area area block of land that um uh, was much larger than than some of the blocks of land that are around because it had been um originally it was a um uh an institutional you know like a block of land that had been used for an institutional building um and because there's such shortage of housing in Melbourne the 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 department that is our client wanted to really make a build wanted us to design a building that was much denser than what than the surrounding which of course is a problem because context wise mm-hmm. you have single villas and then you know a building that even it's only three stories high but it's still quite different in scale to whatever is around and there's all the ongoing issues of um, you know related related issues of overlooking overshadowing you know the neighbors don't like being being next to something that's much larger than them and all of that so I mean it's it's a pity that um I can't show you a video <laughs> but the f- the thought process in that bill in that project was and the video shows this where it's like a, a, a if you can imagine a pair of arms gathering up all the little villas that are in the suburbs and bringing them in and then as you bring in this bunch of villas the thing grows vertically wow. so wow. and it was then of course that was to describe this sense of village because the uh, a lot of the people in a lot of the people that are our clients client clients um who have been waiting for for um housing for many years for 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 a, for a, a home for many years are um um are isolated often mm. and therefore this we really wanted to create a village for them so that they wouldn't feel isolated in their own apartments but would feel that there was a community that where they could meet friends um um do some activities together and so the courtyard idea came came to mind because courtyards are a wonderful uh space um which is protected and and um this passive surveillance over the courtyards so this the entrance to that project is this courtyard where there's um um uh vegetable garden that people can tend to there's a barbecue that people can you know cook and have a meal together there's also a small um social space mm. in that on that ground floor opposite next to the garden and it's of course the the area that they come in every day they pick up their mail from the gate they go inside the gate gate and then go into their apartment so the the other apartments overlooking this space they're all sort of this this kind of um, a general sense of who's coming and going that mm. it's a safe space that it's you know people can say hello to each other when they pass each other it's it's about social uh, yeah. being you know the social life of a building really Yeah. Superb, superb. I'm definitely <laughs> going to link uh, the architect, uh, the article which you have written on that uh, in the show oh, notes. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, yeah. Um, cool. I think uh, this one is the last one which I wanted to ask you. So, and I'm asking this question since uh, I believe it's like a crying need for India as well, uh, and other developing countries as well. So, uh, you speak about bringing craft of design uh, mm. in your architecture work. So. Uh, like what message would you like to give to um like 
young budding uh, architects and designers and obviously there's a lot more that you can share and you can't really uh, mm. uh, like so I just wanted to know like top three things like say number one you need to have this mm. two is good to have and then three is then whatever so uh, yeah. which which skill needs to be built or harnessed to start designing spaces which are more inclusive benefiting people at large and society at large so if you can give like top three <laughs> okay so I'm crazy about craft yeah I, I, I have to say that um here here you have this incredible resource you know the crafts that i've seen in the short time that i've been here is mind boggling i mean we do not we have lost most of the traditional crafts unfortunately um so you know i think the first thing in terms of being an architect and and retaining it's retaining your identity you, you the the identity and working with the identity of the place that yet you're working in so of course we're global citizens but really what we need to do is 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 not dilute our own culture keep your your culture strong by supporting your craftsmen by supporting um the arts and and all the other uh, uh, cultural activities that are happening in your city and in your you know in your um, state and yeah. you know um, and tr- and as much as possible learn what differentiates you know that's the second thing to learn what differentiates your place to other places and be as local as you can be but of course learning all the good things that you can learn through the internet or through going <laughs> overseas or however else you through books and all the other things that you can learn from everyone else but don't do that um uh to copy to co- well you know copy well <laughs> huh, yeah, <laughs> you can yeah. copy well or you can copy badly don't copy badly <laughs> because that uh, that that is a shame mm. you know that would be a shame so yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. and third <laughs> oh the third well the third thing is to uh, enjoy yourself you mm. know it's important that architecture is tough tough profession um there's a lot of um a lot of uh, hurdles to cross at every, you know, you're designing, then you have to convince your client that you've designed something that is, 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 you know, is going to benefit them. Then you have to convince your municipality or your authorities that what you're doing is the is the right thing. Then you've got to convince your client to pay for this thing. Mm. <laughs> you know, there's a lot mm. of hurdles and then you finally go on site and there's going to be lots of problems that arise on site. That's the standard thing. Mm-hmm. You have to expect all the problems. But in all of this, there has to be joy, you know. Mm. Really, there has to be something that nourishes you and that you uh, you – look forward to every day otherwise it's not worth it yeah yeah, yeah absolutely <laughs> and and when you said uh, you have to identify that cultural connect between you and your work and the people and the regional craftsmen and people mm. like that mm. uh, like is it philosophically correct to say that you have to be almost like egoless about your thought and just embrace what they are doing and just just resonate with them at a more deeper level definitely yeah. you know uh, there's so much you can learn from people who are experts mm. in what you know in the thing that they they do well yeah. and i've i've um learned a lot from the people on site um the way that bricklayers l- lay a brick wall it's beautiful it's mm. just a beautiful thing mm. and um uh, it, it's a joy to talk to them and and discuss, you know. And they 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 they're as invested in the in the um, in the process of design as I am, mm. you know. Because and often we have changed things that were on the drawings because someone has suggested to us that they would like to do this or that. You mm. know, we've said, yeah, that's a fantastic idea. You have to be open mm. to to ideas and to and suggestions and 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 then you'll find that 
people are very, very proud of what they're doing and they will do an even better job than they've done, you know, in the yeah. past. And it's great. It's a great collaboration, really. Yeah, yeah. Process, yeah. Because yesterday, just yesterday I was reading this, uh, like, with love you can be democratic, but if it's pseudo-love, then you mm. are, like, completely mm. taking on hatred on your... Mm. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, you have to be genuine. You're yeah. absolutely right. You yeah. have to be very genuine in your relationship with people that work with you because, you know, it is it, it, no building is built by one person. Yeah. You know, what is wrong with the idea of the star architect, really? I mean, even though there are people that are incredibly talented in this profession, but to think that only one person has been responsible for a building is a crazy idea, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cool. I think on that note, uh, thanks a lot, Ellie, for giving your time. It was really nice talking to you. And like uh, in this busy schedule of yours with WID, uh, thank you especially for giving this time. Oh, well, it's a pleasure. I really enjoyed it too. Cool. <laughs> so Ellie is very uh, approachable and willing to mentor and guide people interested in design and architecture especially. Uh, her email ID will be shown in the notes below. Uh, and just to thank... WID. So this episode was possible because of WID in Design 2020 uh, plus conference, which is which happened in Mumbai in Jan 20. Yeah, it was the first international conference and exhibition curated by the HCAR Foundation in Mumbai, which aimed to share stories of women around the world in the field of architecture, construction, and other related design fields. For more details, visit www.wid2020plus.org, and for uh, Ellie's work you can definitely visit mgsarchitects.co.au yes and uh, yeah yes. thanks a lot no problem <laughs> lovely thank you yeah, thanks and that's it from today's Gyan session catch us on iTunes Savan Stitcher or any podcasting app you use do rate us on iTunes and follow us on Twitter Facebook and Instagram stay tuned for more Gyan on audiogyan.com till then bye Fresh cracked egg, sausage, melty cheese, and a toasty English muffin. Uh, honey, I appreciate you repainting our living room, but you're so into your McDonald's sausage McMuffin with egg, you've also painted the sofa, and the fish tank, and the cat. <laughs> Teal does bring out Mr. Pickle's eyes. Right now, buy any size McCafe Premium Roast Coffee Sausage McMuffin with Egg or McChicken Biscuit and get one for a dollar. Price and participation may vary valid for item of equal or lesser value. For a limited time.